Yeah, I do have, and I think we touched on it, and I do have one more thing I wouldn't mind discussing and helping others, is when you're out, when I'm out there looking for um, an acquisition or if something comes across my desk, there's many different ways to approach this and fund this, right? I mean, a lot of people think they got to go to a bank and they've got to, you know, get the, the lender to approve them and they've got to, you know, uh, use a pharmacy lender or their local lender. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of, of um, roadblocks there with banks. I mean, you know, there's a lot of paperwork, there's a lot of fees, there's a lot of, you know, et cetera, et cetera, SBA, non-SBA. I mean, all these different components to getting that finance. But there's a lot of owners out there who have are, are starting to age out, who have made lots of money over their career. I mean, you know, and they and they're probably invested in other things, you know, bakeries, fun houses, <laughs> right, you know, fun houses, store, bakeries, store, you know, storage <laughs> units, right. you know, property, whatever that looks like. And with the new tax, with the new taxes potentially changing here in 2022, you know, it's not advantageous for them to take a lump sum. And so I like to go out and have that conversation with the seller. Hey, let's go have dinner and let's talk. Let's talk. Let's see what comfort level we, we can build. It goes back to that relationship, that trust, that, um, you know, who you know. And, and it, it, it's an interesting – I really enjoy it because I have found that a lot of sellers somehow are connected to me, especially in this area, via school or via people that have worked right. for me. And so you can build that trust and then they will carry the note, you know, and then your bank fees are gone. The owner doesn't, uh, the seller doesn't have all these tax implications related to one lump sum. Right. You know, they've got some interest revenue. They're getting a monthly payment of, on the mortgage. And man, has it worked out well in a lot of my situations. But I guess where I'm going is, is don't be afraid to build that relationship, you know, with that seller. You know, don't make it a, you know, we're always like the seller versus the right, buyer. Right, and yeah. I got the look. It's like and, North and, Korea, and, South and, Korea yeah. all the and time. And here's my yeah. first bit of advice. Keep the accountants and the lawyers out of it. <laughs> <laughs> because they like to justify their jobs. And they justify their jobs by putting hours on paper and yeah. sending the for bill real, to you. For real. You, you need sense. them. And there's a space for them. Yes. And there's time for them. Like, but when you're developing that relationship, break those walls down and really um, start a line of communication and, and go to dinner and, you know, meet at a conference and, and build that because it's advantageous for both the seller and the buyer. And I think it's even going to be more advantageous coming into 2022 with, you know, we got a different leadership in, in government and, you know, we've all heard that the taxes are going to, you know, capital gains and stuff are going to change, you know, significantly. And so, um, just, just something that I've learned over the years and it's, it's worked out really well for both. Yeah. Whether you're, so especially if you're trying to acquire a, uh, a new location, you're, you're, you're saying for those of you out there, especially if you've never done it before ever, there's other ways, right? You don't have to go, you, you don't have to go to try to go get approved from a bank right off the bat. Sure. You may have to fall back on it, but you're right. Yeah. I, yeah. I see. There, there's, there's a lot, there's, there's, you know, there's several ways. And one, I love being creative, you know, and like I you know, said in podcast one, you know, what well, we can put my email out there and people can contact me, you know, cause I love, you know, that part of it and coaching and helping. Right. But yeah, I mean, you know, the bank is always there, you know, but there's other potential options, combinations of those options that, help everybody and both financially, you know, and just from a relationship too. Right. Um, so Thanks, man. Right. it makes good. a ton of sense. It's like Jeff Harrell's practical tidbit. Number one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, Don't own funny. a bakery. Number two, not bad yeah. to open up across from a Rite Aid. I always feel like yeah. I learned a bunch of things here. You know, it's funny though. Like you always see a Walgreens across the street from a CVS and you're like, yeah. Why? But why? Right. <laughs> Get two flavors like, of crap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Walgreens employees. I don't mean that. Or CVS yeah. pharmacists. Do you guys are all still our brothers, but yeah. They know. We're, we're, yeah, no, and, and it's it's actually becoming common knowledge now. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you didn't you didn't tell us anything we don't know. Mark. Yeah, no, no. I, like what one, one of my one of our good friends um who opened up a, a pharmacy by our old house. We used to live by opened up literally in almost in the same shopping center, which I was surprised she was able to do right. Connected almost to a CVS. And I was just like, man, uh, and you're right. It probably took her about a year. It took 12 months. It didn't take nine months, but probably took her 12 months. And she was, 
breaking even? I'll, I'll tell you the opportunity right now is greater than it's ever been because of the labor issues that these chains are seeing. If we, um, as independent pharmacies, can just keep, I, I, I use the term with my, my group, just bite down on the bit mm-hmm. and grind through this. Keep our doors open, keep our phones open, answer the phones. We are seeing tremendous growth off the back of the chains because they're, they're, you know, they can't, they don't have the staff. They're shutting down two or three days. They're reopening. Right. Yeah. They're not answering their phones. I mean, we physically are getting in cars and driving over to chains for copies. And I, this is in at least four or five wow. locations that I've heard this from my partners. And right now is the opportunity. So, you know, if I can, if anybody out there, I know we're all tired from, you know, the pandemic, from COVID, from all the different stuff. But if we can bite down on that bit and if we can figure out how to keep our phones open and keep our doors open, that it's going to be a huge growth pattern for independent pharmacy. And, and we are going to come out shining because we were there and we made it through. And it's not going to be right. easy. I mean, in the meetings I'm in, I look across the table. I was in one yesterday for my compounding lab. They look tired. Yeah. You know, the employees are tired. They're working overtime. We can't get enough people. You know, um, I, I make a joke the other day. I'm like, if they have a heartbeat and a full set of teeth, I'm hiring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so, and so you know, it, but but you know, I just I just you know, Eric called me the other day, discouraged out of Spokane, and I said, I'm going to tell you something, man. I'm going to be flat honest with you. If you just bite down and just get through this, we're going to come out roses on the other end, and 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 we're seeing it. We're seeing 30% growth in some stores. You know, going from 450 scripts a day to 900. 